you like, I know her, but this is the Lord swearing by his name. He said, if you don't want to listen to my words and be obedient, then there is a punishment that comes with it. Period. I should have put an exclamation point there. <laughs> the destruction of the family of David would be the punishment. Can you imagine how true this promise is when the Lord swears upon himself? Yes. I don't know if you know how tough that could be. Yes. He oh, swore yes. on himself. Oh, yes. He, he, he didn't say, I swear on the earth. I swear on the water. I swear on myself. It lets him know that there can be no greater backing. No. None, <laughs> none greater than the Lord. There is no greater backing of what the Lord says will be done. He swore on himself. There's nobody who can back it up more than the Lord. Amen. Amen. And there's nobody that can stop him. Amen. So when he swears on it, it's sworn. It's sworn. Yeah. Yes. yeah, and to add with that, brother teacher, God had got to that point where he was fed up. Oh. Because this this wasn't the first evil king. There were several, three, I think, I believe, two or three before or that, that. that, yes, that were doing evil, that yes. were practicing evil, practicing injustice. And God had got to the point of enough is enough. Enough is enough. Okay, I'm, I'm finna hand some judgment. It's time, it's time to make a move on y'all, because y'all are not hearing me. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, time after time, and that's something we can look yes. at for ourselves. Ooh. When God's trying to tell us something, you know, it comes to a point in our lives, and, and on God's time where he says, I'm, I'm done with it now. I'm finna uh, help you out. Yes. I'm finna make the call now. And, and, and you don't want that to happen. No, no. If, man, if there, you're doing there's wrong, some things. No. Even no. when he told him, I'll leave you to your reprobate minds, don't leave me to my own mind because it ain't good by itself. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody's mind good by itself. Don't leave me to my own actions that the Lord ain't involved in because I'm a mess up. And this man, this king and his people, they doing what they want to do. They doing the wrong things. And they ain't involved in the Lord because he done told you he's a just God. But all these things you have done have been unjust. Yes. You keep doing these things. You can't gain anything without the Lord. And that prosperity, you ain't going to get it. Mm -mm. Those blessings, no. you're not going to get it. No. Hey, I'll destroy everything you got because mm -hmm. I'm God. You haven't been listening. Maybe I need to move somebody else into that spot. <laughs> Remember, that's, that's what happened with us. When the Gentiles got the word, the Jews didn't accept it. The Gentiles got a piece of it. Yes, sir? Yeah, and what this ultimately boils down to is, is our choice. Again, our, yes. You know, mm -hmm. you can choose to do what he said and be blessed or choose not to do it and suffer the consequences. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's our choice it's our of what choice. we do. You know, but because, you know, we, we, we look and take for granted that the Lord is long-suffering. Yeah. You know, he yeah. said, do this, but we going to do this, and ain't nothing, hap nothing happening right now. Because mm. he's still giving you a chance to get it right. Yeah. You know, and you yeah. can't take that for granted, because you no. don't know when he's going to reach his point of no return. And be like, okay, Amen. I'm done. I'm done with it. We're going to talk on that, too, because I know people think that his forbearance and long-suffering, we're we going to talk on that. But the problem is, why ain't we listening? Mm -hmm. Right. That's the whole problem. I'm going to give you blessings and prosperity if you listen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know what, Lord? Let me close these ears. Yeah. Because yeah. I want to do me. Do it your way. Yes. <laughs> and I usually say, it's either your way or your way. Well, we on the your way side. We, we hanging out on the corner in your way, kingdom. And it ain't working. Mm -hmm. It ain't working for you. And it ain't working for the Lord. And it's going to be his will no matter what. Yes. Yeah. You may think it's going to be your way. But in the end, you're going to be like, man, I wish I would have done your way. Mm -hmm. So we know what's going to happen. The Lord had done this before by swearing on himself. And look at the results. Anybody want to read Hebrews 6, 13 through 15? When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself. Uh oh, repeat that. He swore by who? He swore by himself. Okay. Saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. Oh, to repeat that. What is he giving him? I will surely bless you uh -oh. and give you many descendants. And so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. Wow. 
He's warning it again. And guess what came right after it? If you do it, a blessing. Hey, but you got to wait on the Lord. I, I know I want it to happen today, Lord, because I woke up and it's supposed to happen now. No, that's your way. Your way. <laughs> See, Yahweh going to tell you, you might have to wait a little while. You might have to do some things. I might need to get you in better shape so you can handle what I'm about yeah. to give you. Amen. But be patient. Because he's been patient with us. And trust me, when we get to that part, you'll see how patient the Lord is with us. With us. For thus saith the Lord unto the king's house of Judah, Thou art Gilead unto me, and the head of Lebanon. Yet surely I will make thee a wilderness and cities which are not inhabited. This is a big slap in your face first. Because <laughs> these two areas were great regions near the promised land. And God was telling them that he valued the house of Judah like this land. He did. Gilead was known for oaks, and Mount Lebanon was the highest mountain in Israel, as is this family. You're the king, the lineage of David. You are the top family. But don't play yourself, top family. <laughs> you being wicked, <laughs> you You on earth. I'm sitting up in glory. You being wicked. You being wicked, wicked. You may have wealth and be powerful. You may. But as I created the land of Gilead and Lebanon, I can make them a wilderness. As I can your family. And not just you but the cities which you inhabit also, I'll take it all away. You may think you all that, but I can show you how to bust your bag of chips is what he's saying. Because mm -hmm. I can take all this away from you. If you want to be ungrateful and do the wrong thing and not listen to me, this prosperity, this blessing that yeah. you have, it's mine to give or take. And I can take it back. And you may think you down there on earth with all this power, but it's in my hands. Mm -hmm. I allow you to have that. And just like Lebanon and Gilead, I put that there. I can take it away. I can do the same to you. Mm -hmm. You know what just hit me, Brother Teacher? I'm thinking about our situation today. God is, God is just kind of showing us a little bit what could be done. We think about all these large and, and plush uh, uh, stadiums that's being that has been built. Yep. We think about Disney World, how beautiful man has made that. But right now, what's going on right now? Those things are sitting idle. 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 N no one going in, and nothing coming up. Nope. And in a sense, God is saying, don't put so much pride into uh, of what you see, or 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 or, or 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 the beautiful and the plush and the uh, uh, elaborate things. Because if there's corruption in it, mm -hmm. if there's evil within it, I will take that and I will wipe it out. And, yes. and God is God. I can I can build over. I can build something much beautiful, yes. like He's telling us about this world. Yes. We destroyed it, and then there's a heaven that awaits us. And and He's telling them, you got a pride problem. Pride. You you got an arrogance problem. And, yes. And you see, I see it in you, and you think of that beautiful land, and you doing well over here, but. Your pride is in the way. Because, see, if you would humble yourself, Amen. you could get to me. <laughs> but since you got that pride, you can't treat anybody right. Mm -hmm. You can't act just. Mm -hmm. And guess what? With your pride, there's going to be some problems. Mm -hmm. There's always problems with pride. Anybody want to read? And everybody know this verse, Proverbs 16 and 18. Pride goes before destruction. A haughty spirit before a fall. I hate to say I tell, he told you so, but <laughs> he told you so. If you got this pride and this arrogance about you, and you definitely got it in front of the Lord, you're going to fall. You're going to have a hard time. And the king, he's getting ready to have his hard time if he don't get right. In other words, don't get it twisted because you are a king of nations. I am Lord of the world and I can bring you down. Amen. Amen. And anything that you favor. Mm -hmm. You may favor something, I can bring it down. These other cities, you can have it, I can bring it down. <laughs> These loved ones, I can bring it down. Those animals, 
I can bring it down. If you think Job lost everything, I can show you I can outdo that. So he lets them know your, your pride is in the way. Get, get your repentance together. Listen to the prophet I done sent to you. He's been telling you how I feel. And don't forget, I swore on my own name. Don't forget, I, I can do this. So in verse 7 it says, And I will prepare destroyers against thee, everyone with his weapons, and they shall cut down the choice cedars and cast them into the fire. I just made this short because I was too busy tripping on the other verse. <laughs> if you think that I can't bring you down, then know that I will not fight against the Babylonians for you. Uh-oh, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Lord, hold up. You helped me uh, with my, my great, great, great when you fought the Philistines uh -huh. and, and you, you won the battle for them. And now you're saying you're not going to help me out? Can, can you help us? Can you do the same thing? Can you help us? Well, <laughs> let me tell you, the one that was fighting the Philistines Come on. was being obedient. The one that's with these Babylonians right now was being disobedient. And I will use them for my benefit. Mm -hmm. But I will fight against you. Ooh, that's, that's worse than them not fighting at all. You don't want that. You don't want that. You don't, you don't want that. <laughs> What did they used to say back in the day? Your arms are too short to box with God. Don't get knocked out by the Lord. Because he said, I will fight against you. And I can tell you, that's a fight you don't want. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine the Lord just letting you wake up in pain every day with no mercy for ailing, the healing of anything? Could you imagine not having water enough to quench your thirst? Could you imagine not even knowing the Lord? Not even having them talk to you. See, the Lord got a lot to go, and if He fighting against you, I can't run to Big Brother. <laughs> I can't call on Mama to fight this battle. I can't get Daddy because he's the Superman in the house. Who are you gonna have fight him? Nobody. Nobody. And that's what made the verse when He swore by His name so important. There's nobody beyond the Lord. If you want me to fight against you, you're going to have a bad battle. Mm -hmm. So in verse 8 it says, And many nations shall pass by this city. Uh-oh. And they shall say, Every man to his neighbor. Wherefore hath the Lord done this unto this great city? Uh-oh, you know that prideful and arrogant city that was there. What happened to it? <laughs> the nations will watch after it is burned down and destroyed and wonder why this Lord of David... You notice I said this Lord of David because he was good to David. Why this Lord of David has destroyed Jerusalem? The answer would be because we have provoked the Lord again. We continue to provoke him. Anybody want to read 1 Kings 16, 2 through 3? I lifted you up from the dust and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. But you followed the ways of Jeroboam, and caused my people Israel to sin and to arouse my anger by their sins. Hold on, stop right there. You arouse his anger by his sins. Think of this king. Keep going, please. So I am about to wipe out Basha and his house. Uh oh. And I will make your house like that of Jeroboam, son of Nebat. See, we've been in this situation before. Guess what? You've been warned. We had bad kings. If you look through first and second kings, you'll see them all through the place. Yeah. But have we provoked the Lord before? Let me let me give you a few. Don't stop there. Look at these verses, and you can look at these on your own. First Kings 21, 22 through 23. Second Kings 21, 14 through 15. Isaiah 65, 1 through 5. Chronicles 36, 15 through 16. And Psalm 106, 28 through 29. And this is just to name a few. There are a whole lot more where we provoked. Mm -hmm. We are always provoking the wrath of God. Always. When we don't listen to him, we provoking his wrath. When we treat somebody unjustly, he cannot be a God of justice 
and have a follower to treat somebody unjustly. They don't go together. They don't match on the scale. He gets provoked. He told you, your sin, your sin arouses my anger. Ooh. Your sin, our sin arouses his anger. So, God knows about us provoking them, and we do it. And then they know that we made it this way by our disobedience. See, we, we did this, this wrath of God, by our disobedience. The problem with this king is he's not being obedient. Amen. He didn't ask this king to be perfect. David was not perfect. But he said, call on me. Repent. Treat the people right. He didn't tell you, you got to be perfect. He know we ain't going to be. But he did say, do this. Treat these people right. I know I had David. He was a good king. He wasn't perfect, but he was obedient to me. He knew how to repent. He loved his people. He listened to me. Even when he fell short, he got on his knees and came back to me. Yes. And God longs to be gracious to us. Mm -hmm. See, the problem is the Lord keeps waiting for us. He wants to give to us. We don't deserve. And when you think about who God is and how great God is, why would he even wait on us? That's how great his love is. When, when you speak of God's jealousy, it's out of his love for us. We, we need to get it together. And the problem was we weren't getting it together. We weren't doing the right thing. Brother Teacher, if I could just add Go real ahead. quick. We were, we were talking about doing the right thing, and you, you were talking about the importance of repentance. And it's just a reminder to us that this repentance, and we hear it over, but keep it up fresh in our minds. Repent is not just a, uh, repentance is not just a one-time thing. No. It's continuously, we continuously uh, have those, those sinful thoughts. We yes. continuously uh, 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 um, do the wrong thing. We continuously provoke God. So therefore, we must be continuously repenting, repenting to God. Yes. Like, God, I'm sorry. I missed that one. I could have, I seen some injustice and I turned my back on God. I, I'm sorry, my Lord, forgive me. I had the opportunity to help someone, right? There, there was somebody in need, but I chose to close my fist and put my hand in my pocket. Lord, forgive me. There's, there's a continuous uh, repentance continuous. from us. We don't, we don't get away from it. You will stop repenting when you can no longer speak. Amen. Amen. We have to repent. Then they shall answer, because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord their God and worshiped other gods. Here we go again. And serve them. That's verse 9. Other gods. This is the answer to verse 8. <laughs> and we have continued to do this even to this day. I can't give the Lord two hours, but let them call you in for overtime and you can give them eight hours. I gotta go. I can't give the Lord an hour a day, but I can binge watch Netflix. I don't have time for the Lord, but I watched all of the last dance about Michael Jordan. And please don't let me forget that my vanity doesn't have time for the Lord, but I can get my hair did from one to nine hours. And you even got to pay for that. You even got to pay for that one. Just food for thought. And hey, I, I can't leave it out myself. I can sometimes sit down and get in the comic book world and be gone from the world and everything else. So just food for thought about the things that, that we sometimes emphasize, that we place in front of the Lord. Lord, I'm sorry. We all got it. It don't make a difference who we are, what we say we can. Somehow we have done that. And I, like I said, even myself, if you give me a comic book or a box of them, I'm gone. I, I'm gone for a while. If there's a chance, I'm gone. And I could be doing something for the Lord even then. Even when I think I do a lot, we don't do enough. We all need to think about the time that the Lord has waited for us. And I'm going to show you why. Because if you look at it, see, we start reading in Romans uh, 2 and 4. 
It was talking about the riches of the Lord. It says goodness. Mm. Now, goodness may be considered God's kindness to us in regard to our past sins. He has been good to us because he has not judged us yet, though we deserve it. We deserve it. Yes. Uh-oh, forbearance. This may be considered God's kindness to us in regards to our present sin. This very day, as soon as you woke up, indeed, this very hour, we have fallen short of his glory. Yet, look at that yet. That yet is big. Yet he holds back his judgment against us. He didn't. He still got his sin. And then that long suffering, and we got a Lord that's long suffering. This may be considered God's kindness to us in regard to our future sins. He knows that we will sin tomorrow and the next day, yet he holds back his judgment against us. He gives us a chance to get right. We should be uplifting the Lord just for this richness here. You know, we, we think of material when we think of richness. I'd rather have this richness from the Lord than material. Because, see, that material will die, and it will die like I will, but the Lord's given me a chance to get right. And he is the one that is supplying the mercy mm -hmm. and the Amen. grace. Amen. I ain't doing nothing to receive it special, but he loves us that much. His kindness for us is that much that he says, I'm going to take care of your past. I'm going to be faithful during your present. And I even know you're going to do it in the future, but I'm going to still love you. But you've got to call gotcha. him. You've got to let him have this. Weep ye not for the dead, <laughs> neither bemoan man, but weep sore for him that goeth away, for he shall return no more, nor see his native country. Now this verse, <laughs> I, I liked it because I knew who he was talking about and what had happened to the other one. <laughs> These words are spoken in regards to the death of King Josiah. Mm -hmm. If you go to 2 Kings 23, 29 through 30, you can see what went on. The one, and he was a good king, that's right. The one that went away was his judge son, Joahaz. Mm -hmm. And this is Joahaz of Judah, not of Israel. Because if you know their lineage, there was a Joahaz of Israel and there's a Joahaz of Judah. And he was a worshiper of idols. Now, Josiah was a godly king, so you don't have to mourn his death. And he tell him, don't mourn his death. The fate of Joahaz, though, was worse than his father's. So weep for him, <laughs> that disobedient, idol-worshiping fool. Weep for him because he was the first king of Israel to be deported. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> you the king and they deported you? <laughs> you must have really been bad. What was you doing? What were you doing? <laughs> So, and then to die in exile. He, he wasn't coming back. He wasn't coming back to see his native country. So he died in exile. King Jehoahaz should have never, his problem was he should have never restarted doing the things that they were doing. The pagan practices. Remember his father had gotten rid of that. King Josiah had gotten rid of all of these things. He was doing the right thing. His son, though, who followed in his footsteps, said, no, 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 you did that. I got to do it my way. And that my way got him in trouble. And see, when you look at this punishment that the Lord is talking about, here it is playing out right with the son. Because what did he say? He said, y'all going to pay me? I'm going to worship idols? I'm going to do the things that I want to do. Because I'm the king. I'm high and mighty. But just like Lebanon and Gilead, <laughs> I can make it a wilderness too. <laughs> and the Lord said, let me show you. So he shows him. So King Josiah had stopped when he ruled. You know, he had stopped all these things, but Joah has allowed the pagan shrines and altars to become a part of Judah's landscape. Mm. Once again, if you're coming from the lineage of David, how do you get to these situations? See, you, you can't do that. It seemed as if he didn't have any regard for his father's devotion to the Lord. His father had cleaned it up. 
He said, we're going to do God's way. 